Hello people, I'm Ginny Meadow. I'm a fourth generation witch. Now you can probably see the wafts of steam that are coming out. That's because my heater broke and they're not delivering a new one till tomorrow, but I can't film tomorrow because you'll never see the video. This of course is my ever popular witchcraft through the month of December. So as always with these videos, what I like to do is to give you a general overview of the witchcraft trends that happen throughout the month of December, and then we'll go through the nitty gritty day to day detail of what witchcraft you can do on which day and why. So with that said, let's start with our general overview. December is a time when the bird song really has dwindled, isn't it? And there's only really three birds in the English countryside who sing through the winter, the robin, the wren and the thrush. These birds are therefore considered incredibly propitious and lucky. Of course, this ties into the old phrase of kill a robin or a wren, never prosper boys or men. These birds are said to inhabit the spirit of the wassail, because of course December is the time when we start our spirit of wassailing. For those of you who don't know what wassailing is, it is simply a reawakening of the spirit of the orchard, and this is done through a variety of methods, mostly a lot of noise. People would go out at dusk into their orchards and start banging pans and shooting guns through the branches and generally making a lot of noise and beating the trees with hazel rods in order to waken the spirit of the orchard. Once they'd woken the spirit of the orchard, then you can pour a libation to that spirit in order to ensure that your crop for next year comes a plenty. It's a charming tradition. I mean, there's different variations of this tradition throughout the whole of any wassailing country. And I live deep in wassailing country. And there's a lot of it that goes on around here. It is fun. I do recommend it. December also holds one of the most important festivals throughout the year, and that is, of course, the winter solstice. This is the rebirth of the sun, and it's incredibly joyous, as births are a time of care, worry, and immense joy. We will celebrate the winter solstice with the feasting and the present giving of Yule. Every single pagan, Neolithic, prehistory man has celebrated this time of year, where the sun is, seems to stand still. Every culture that you look at has some form of winter solstice celebration. It is one of the largest, if not the largest, throughout the wheel of the year, because it marks the start of the birth of the sun and the start of that wheel. Samhain marks the beginning of the new year because the new year needs to have this encroaching darkness in order to produce light and that is what's been happening over the last months. So now we are going to look at a huge celebration. It was traditional not just through Christian um, mythology but through every nation's mythology to give presents during this winter solstice. It is a time of joy and celebration, and that is the overarching tide of winter. I'm pretty sure you can feel the energy of December bringing in that Christmas party spirit, and that's the reason why we have so many Christmas parties. We're like, oh, it's the celebration of the sun. We felt this in our DNA for generations. Let's have a party. It is a time for you to get together with your friends and family, give presents, have a drink, have a feast, and light some candles. Candles are a must at this time of year. They bringing light into the darkness. The Dutch do it very well with their hugger and that sort of, you know, cosy candle lit mornings. And I really appreciate that. I, I think it's a lovely way to start your day by lighting some candles. So that is my witchy trends overview for the month of December. Listen out to the few birds that are left. Celebrate with joy the season Sabbath of Yule and go out and wassail. So with that said, let's look to the ditty gritty day to day detail of what witchcraft you can do when and why. And we're going to start, of course, with the 1st of December. The 1st of December is the night of the new moon. This is one of the two new moons that happen in December, and this particular moon is in Sagittarius. 
Astrologers believe that each new moon is ruled by the sign that it appears in. Sagittarius is all about opening your heart to inspiration and trusting to the universe that they will take your fall. And this is a wonderful new moon to make a wish on. In the olden days, new moons were considered incredibly lucky and very good for wishing. Don't wish through glass, though. Apparently that's, you know, deflects the energy of the moon. But if you should wish on this new moon, I would suggest that you wish for that inspiration, that creativity and that wonderfulness that is part of the Sagittarian moon. The next date we're coming to is the 5th of December. Now, if you are a gardener, pay attention. This is the best day of the year to get rid of your snails and slugs. I know, I know. Who thought? Because if you get rid of them today, then you will not be plagued by them next year. My husband once went and took about 20 orange peels and put them around the garden overnight and waited until the slugs had crept underneath them. And then the next morning went out and collected all the slugs underneath these orange peels and put them in a bucket. He then took this bucket and took out handfuls of slugs and started throwing them at me. I think I might divorce him for that. I'm slightly traumatised by that experience of slugs and snails. But today, if you have a husband who's not quite as ghastly as that, then I suggest get rid of your slugs by doing the orange peel trick. It works very well. The 6th of December is the Feast of St Nicholas. Now, many of you will know this feast well. It is when you put your shoes out on the windowsill and St Nicholas will come down during the night and fill your shoes with presents and sweets and nuts. This is a Scandinavian tradition. However, I think it all builds into the fact that St Nicholas, Father Christmas, Santa Claus, Old Man Winter, the Green Man, the Holly King, are all really part and parcel of the same male energy that does pervade through the Christmas season. And so, however you celebrate this male energy, it might be putting out the shoes on the windowsill or your stockings above the mantelpiece. However you do it, it's a great way to join in with this seasonal energy. The 12th of December is a day when you must, must, must eat supper. If you do not eat supper tonight, you are liable to be attacked by fairies. And this could be a bit, you know, traumatic. They say that the fairies will come and take you out from your bed and move you over the top of your house. And there are several reports from the 1800s of this happening, of people seeing men and women being lifted up over their house. This means that before you go to bed, make sure you eat some food because you do not want to be beset by the Fae. The 15th of December is the traditional day that the cold is said to take a grip. Now, this is an important day because should you possess cats, do not take your cat to bed with you on this day because otherwise that cat will give you ill health over the cold of the winter. You need to spend the first day that the cold takes a firm grip alone or without animals in your bed because otherwise your health is at risk. The 15th of December is also the night of the full moon. This is known as the cold moon, the moon before Yule, the oak moon after the oak king and holly king of mythology who do battle at this time of year. And it is in Gemini. Gemini is a party loving animal, isn't it? And so why not go out and enjoy those Christmas parties and that festive spirit that we're getting into on the night of this full moon? The 16th of December is hurrah, the start of the mince pie season. Now, I don't know if uh, many of you know what a mince pie is, but it is the delicious, sweet sort of raisins and nuts in a pastry shell. And it's made with 13 ingredients. And you should eat 13 mince pies from 13 different cooks. And you will receive one month of luck for each mince pie from each cook that you eat for the next year. Now you don't have to eat them today because that's quite a lot but this is the start of the mince pie season when you begin to eat a mince pie every single day between now and the end of the year. I mean that is not a hardship I have to say because mince pies are quite delicious. The 20th of December is the start of when ghosts walk between now 
and the 25th of December. It is St Thomas's Eve, and I think he was the one of doubting, if anyone knows their Christian mythology, he was the doubting Thomas, but it's his night before, and so you might doubt that you have seen those ghosts abroad, but they will certainly be there. Well, coming into this time of year, when the spirits do walk, it has always been known that it is quite a spiritual time. I think it's something to do with the solstice and the energies, and they want to join in. I mean, why wouldn't you? It's, it's a great fun time of year. And so therefore, beware. From now on, you might start seeing some spirits. The 21st of December is the day of the winter solstice. This happens at 9.19am. This is when the sun is directly above the Tropic of Capricorn. And we have barely seven hours of daylight. It is the shortest day of the year. This day has always been celebrated with fire. So whatever you do on this day, make sure that you light some candles in honour of this season. 22nd of December is when the sun enters the House of Capricorn. Now this is my sign and as ever I'm going to do my favourite part of these almanac series. I'm going to read you what the calendar of shepherds of 1604 says about the Capricornian man and woman. So let's see if it's true. I'm Capricorn so I can tell you whether it is or isn't properly. So the man born under Capricorn shall be irracundious and a fornicator. So that means quite cross and uh, quite sexy. Anyway, a liar and always labouring. <laughs> He shall be a governor of beasts with four feet, and he shall suffer much sorrow in his youth, but shall leave many goods and riches. He shall have great peril at sixteen years, and he shall be rich by women, and shall be a great conductor of maidens. Gosh, he really is a fornicator, isn't he? Um, he shall live seventy years and four months. Well, I don't know any Capricorn men, so um, we'll have to... Uh, if you're a Capricorn male, is that true? Are you a great fornicator? I don't have much of a problem with fornicating as long as it's consensual and everybody is aware of it. I mean, quite fun. The women shall be honest and fearful and have children of three men. She shall do many pilgrimages in her youth and after have great wit. Well, I don't have three children of three men, but obviously I'm a great wit. And I did actually, funnily enough, do quite a few pilgrimages in my youth because I used to enjoy the spiritual aspect of it. Interesting. She shall have great goods, but pain in her eyes. Well, I can't see a bloody thing. And those of you who are on the retreat with me will know I spent the whole retreat going, where are my glasses? I can't see. I can't see. So, yeah, that's true. Pain in my eyes. I can't bloody see a thing. And she shall be at her best estate at 30 years. She shall live 70 years after nature. Do you know, that's wickedly true. I enjoyed being 30 very much. And I've always said, I'm not going to live much past 70. I have no desire to. So, oh. The 24th of December is a day of great superstitions. Now, these are inherited from our pagan ancestry. It wasn't just the traditions of the Christians that came up with this. The Romans, the Etruscans, the pagans, they have all blended into these traditions and superstitions. So I'm just going to let you know a few. The bells of old churches will ring out at midnight. And actually they do this here in the village and it always thrills my heart with joy when I hear the bells ringing out on Christmas night. The animals at midnight will then bow down onto their knees with tears running down their furry faces and they will have and gain the ability to talk. If you go into the stables and buyers though at midnight on Christmas Eve in order to see the animals talking, you will not see them and it will not turn out well for you. At midnight, rosemary is supposed to bloom and flower in the garden. And if you stand by an old beehive, you'll begin to hear them hum and sing. It is also the time when the spirits walk. Anyone remember A Christmas Carol, that spooky tale by Charles Dickens? It is also the time when you're definitely going to see the spirits walk. And the 25th of December is, of course, Christmas Day. This is, again, a day full of superstitions. Now, depending on what day of the week that Christmas falls on, depends on how your year is going to pan out. And this year, it falls on a Wednesday, which means we're going to have a really hard winter and it's going to be quite difficult. On this day, you will have the turkey wishbone. Now, this is a very old tradition. The Etruscan civilization used wishbones as part of their bone divination and bone casting. 
The wishbone was considered the most luckiest part of the animal, and to take a turkey wishbone and break it and make a wish is following in the traditions of our ancestors for thousands of years. I love the name that the early Britons gave it, which is Merry Thought. The 25th is an old day. It was celebrated by the Romans as Saturnalia. The Anglo-Saxons knew it as Modra Nicht, which is Mother's Night. And this date has been annexed by the Christian faith in order to bring Christianity onto a pagan Britain. It is why we bring the evergreens in and decorate our churches. This was only allowed in about the 900s AD because it was considered too pagan to do otherwise. But because we liked to bring evergreens into our homes and decorate them to remind Remind us of the birth of the sun in the new year. The Christians eventually said, oh, OK, you can do it to the churches too. The 26th of December is not a day that I approve of very much because it is the day that you hunt the Jenny Wren. The reason why I think is because the wren was the bird of the druids and it very much a druidical bird and it's a symbol of them. It's a wise bird. The wren has got a lot of mythology associated with it. It is the king of the birds in some way and so to hunt the Jenny Wren and kill it on this day I think is their version of overcoming paganism. The 27th of December, chocolate fiends beware. So this is William Coles wrote in 1657 that chocolate is wonderful efficacy for the procreation of children as it incites Venus and conception in women and it makes those that take it often become fat and corpulent but fair and amiable. It's chocolate day today. Have some chocolate. The 28th of December is the unluckiest day of the year. This is known in the Christian faith as the Holy Innocents Day. It is the day when King Herod slaughtered the innocent children of Judea in order to try and stop the birth of the Messiah. It is the unluckiest day of the year in many mythologies. Do not start any new ventures upon this day. The 30th of December is the night of the Capricorn New Moon. The new moon in Capricorn follows plans, career, ambitions, goals. And so any plans that you make today on this new moon for your work life or, you know, getting ahead in the world, your ambitions will have great success and come to fruition by the time the next new moon in Capricorn appears, which is in six months. It is also the day when you might be suffering from a surfeit of wassailing, and if you are, a cure for this is to place a cold bowl of water upon your head and then into it pour some molten lead, and this will cure your wassailing surfeit. The 31st of December is, of course, the last day of the year. Now, you must make sure that you finish all tasks by the 31st of December because any task that you carry over into the new year will not prosper and will be bound for failure. On the 31st of December, do follow the old charm. The first person to cross your threshold at midnight should be a tall, dark, handsome man. He should carry with him coal for the warmth in life, sugar for the sweet things in life, and salt for necessity. And if he's Scottish, he'll obviously be carrying some whiskey for, you know, why not? <laughs> I don't know, a tipple to drink with your friends, probably. When they come over the threshold, you, they should come over in silence and present the gifts of coal, sugar and salt to you with great solemnity. A lot of people did believe that if you open the back door, you will let out the bad luck of the house and then open the front door and that will bring in the good luck with your tall, dark, handsome man. I do love a bit of New Year traditions. One of my favourites is to ensure that you have some mistletoe filled with berries in your house and everyone to give each other a New Year kiss underneath that mistletoe. A peck on the cheek and to take a berry from the bush until there are none left. Once there are none left, the mistletoe will have lost its magic. If your tall, dark, handsome stranger is entering with a dram of whiskey, it is important that he gives that dram to the head of the household and wishes him a happy new year. And this will ensure your prosperity. 
and hence that is the end of my yearly almanac. I very much hope to see you all next year back with me when I'll have my January almanac to start with. Although I have done these every year, there is always something new for each video and come and join me and celebrate our traditions and witchcrafts together. In the meantime, I hope you have a marvellous Yule, a happy Christmas and have as much fun as you can in this coming season. Do please like and subscribe to help me have as much fun as I can in the coming season. And I will see you all in my next video. Thank you.